All right, I have taken out the single screw that was holding the back side of the unit, which was right here. Um, the device has already some batteries in it, um, so it should be able to um, operate. So let's see what happens. I'm going to switch. Uh, always remember when um, measuring with uh, such a device that you have to be at least at a higher range than the one you are expecting to measure. So for 9 volts, use the 10 volts range. You can use the 50 volts as well, but uh, try not to use uh, a lower range because it would uh, damage the device. This doesn't happen with a multimeter that is um, having a digital readout, but with an analog one, you're stressing uh, the needle and the internal construction. So keep that in mind. Okay, I will also show uh, how the device itself is uh, built, but before that I would like to show you how well it measures. Alright, so uh, let's switch to 2.5 volts and let's measure a typical 5 volts battery. Okay, as you can see, it's slightly above 1.5. Uh, 5 volts. I'm already seeing an issue because we have an analog multimeter and I can reliably show you that. The same battery is going to show a highly different voltage. So let's place the battery and if you can see the readout it's 1.55 volts. However, with this analog multimeter, it shows as 1.5 Sorry, let's use the right polarity. 1.5 If this is 175, I think that the readout is quite... Ah, it's quite alright. I was expecting it to have a higher um, uh, measurement error, but I think it's all right. It's a bit above 1.5 volts, so it's uh, fine. And even if I'm using uh, the um, upper scale as reference, let's see, because I think that this one was correct, not the one in red. Let's see again. So one point. Yes, 100, 1.50 something. It's not um, probably 1.55 volts. So it's quite uh, quite accurate. There is not an issue. But if you if you watch closely, you'll notice that I haven't started precisely at um, the zero volt uh, position. So in order to have a good reading, I had to. Uh, change uh, slightly the angle so that the measurement would be correct. This clearly shows that there is an accuracy problem. Um, in general, a good device should have uh, between 3 and 5% um, accuracy of um, the full scale. So probably around um, less than one division. But in this case, I think that it's almost at one um, one division so it's not a very good uh, device and probably the internal construction of the um, of the analog uh, meter is probably not that great all right let's measure the um, 10 volts battery okay so, it goes on to almost 8 volts. This is not bad. I uh, measured the battery at 7.8. So, if it's slightly above the last value. And, yes, it shows. Probably uh, this uh, final readout would be uh, 7.8. And it's 7.7 
7.8 in this case. So I think that uh, the measurement accuracy is decent. It's not very good, but it's decent. All right, let's see another type of measurements we can make. And let's switch upon resistance. We are on the 10 kilo ohm range. Ooh. So... Okay, this means that probably the battery is expanded or... Yes, we will find out which one is the correct assessment. So let's see, we have two batteries over here. Let's also measure them and see if they went bad. They could have probably reached a lower uh, voltage. And let's also discuss about the internal construction. As you can see, um, it's a single board and it's a board that is um, uh, that has the circuit on only one side. I'm not expecting it to have very good um, voltage, uh, very good high voltage separation and this may be an issue because arcing may occur. The general build quality is quite shoddy as you can notice from um, this particular instance when you can see a cable that is uh, slightly strained. Um, a soldering that is not particularly good if you look closely, you'll notice that it's um, um, it's not uh, shiny and it may be placed at a certain angle, which is not that great. Um, the contact themselves are prob probably made of uh, brass, so they should be working quite all right, but they do not have any sort of... Um, way to make a better contact. Uh, most uh, most of the times you are um, using a different type of connector for the negative uh, position to have more pressure being placed on the positive end. However, in this case you are using just a, a single typical um, metal part. All right, and you can also see the place for a 9 volt battery. Probably I will try and use the 9 volt battery that, of course, doesn't have really 9 volts, but just to show you that you can do that. And let's see what happens. So I place the battery over here. Okay, I think I need to put even more pressure. Uh, and this one may be a particular issue because the battery is probably slightly bigger than your typical uh, Chinese battery that would fit. In general, I, no I noticed that uh, Chinese manufacturers have slightly different uh, physical dimensions. Okay, let's see. There is a buzz or not? No, there is no buzz. Okay, let's see if now we can measure resistances. No. All right, uh, then... It may be for um, the um, transistors uh, factor, so HV, HFE measurement. All right, uh, and the continuity LED doesn't shine. Okay, let's see how much voltage each battery supplies because this will show us if there is a clear issue. I'm expecting uh, the multimeter to be able to use the um, 1.4 uh, volts batteries in series in order to carry on uh, resistance measurements. The 9 volt batteries may have been used in uh, previous designs, but I don't think that right now is essential. Okay, so let's see. Um, all right, so a bit above 1.5 volts. This means that it should have worked. Okay, so a bit one, a bit above 1.5 volts. So it seems that the meter has gone bad. Not entirely sure what happened. I may have a uh, guess, probably a contact that is not that good. This may result in it not being able to operate. Okay, as I see, connections are being made. So this may not be the issue. Um, I'm seeing over here slightly less pressure than I'm expecting, so I'm not entirely sure if it makes the proper contact. Okay, let's make an attempt to use the resistance measurement range. Okay, let's use the adjustment, the 
Yeah, doesn't have any sort of effect. So I'm expecting a poor connection to be to blame over here. So let's see if we are going to fiddle with the batteries if something happens. Mm, not seeing any particular behavior over here. All right, uh, one aspect I should have mentioned for this device. If you look closely, and I think you will agree with me, just a moment to have a better look, um, there isn't any sort of place where I noticed a fuse. And I think that the fuse is the most basic um, safety feature that you would have. So from the start, this uh, multimeter is very poor. And I was expecting that, and it's no surprise. But keep that in mind. If you buy such a device, there is no fuse. And uh, despite saying over here that it's fuse and diode protection, you can uh, consider that to be irrelevant. All right, I can readily see some issues with um, the needle's uh, deflection angle. All uh, multimeters have this behavior when they, they change um, their orientation, but I think in this case it may be slightly higher than you would expect. All right, so um, not entirely sure what happened, and I'm not entirely sure if it worked before and how much time ago this was the case. However, I notice. Ah, okay. So if you fiddle enough with connections, you can ensure that something goes properly. But let's find out where the issue may. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so only when measuring very high currents, you would probably uh, require the 9-volt um, battery. Let's see if this is the case. We will notice immediately. So I'm going to place it roughly in this position and see if we can do that. Okay, so I'm assuming that one connection inside the multimeter was not good. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I placed the, um, I adjusted the zero position. Let's see what happens for the other ranges. Okay, okay, the deflection goes to a different position. This is one of the major reasons why you will never use uh, reliably uh, an analog multimeter for measuring resistances because you would have to fiddle so much until you find the zero value then actually uh, making a measurement and determining the, the actual value is going to waste too much time. So in this day and age, I think that um, you will uh, be better off without doing this. And as you can reliably see, the zero position depends upon the range. So in here, you already see that you have reduce deflection and you would have to adjust. As, as I mentioned, this is the bane of analog multimeters. Of course, in this case, I'm uh, suspecting the internal build to be uh, the cause of uh, making an additional draw that reduces the, the maximum deflection of the needle. But you have to take that into account. All right. Um, yes, I think this just about well sums up the current situation of uh, this uh, multimeter. I will also show the buzzer. I'm not entirely sure if it works. Okay, it's quite a loud buzzer. It sounds uh, fine, so this is a plus. Right, ultimately, what is my um, position about uh, this uh, particular multimeter? Well, uh, taking into account the, um, the price at which it's being sold, I think that uh, you have to be right away um, conscious of the fact that since it doesn't have a fuse, it's a very dangerous device to use. Just about uh, any sort of mistake, um, particularly when trying to measuring a current and you would plug it into um, a socket would result in a fire, so mm, or at least uh, a major damage to, to the device. So I don't think this one is 
um, advisable in any case. However, let's also see what kind of um, AC current uh, accuracy we are having. So let's see if I can uh, find a way to properly plug the multimeter into a socket and I think that those probes will be able to do so, so keep the because I wanted to also show you this. Okay, it may not be entirely obvious. I think we, yes, we made the right connection. Ah, okay, so it shows around 2,040 volts, so it's reasonably accurate, I think. This is what uh, I'm expecting, a bit above 220 volts. All right, so let's get back and mention my thoughts on it. I think that uh, the device doesn't have any excuse for not being provided with at least a fuse. Even a glass fuse would massively increase the safety of such a device. Uh, poor connectors, poor probes, um, um, even from my point of view, a particularly poor um, analog meter is not um, a strong feature that I would uh, consider to be decent at this kind of price. I think that oh, they are overpriced ultimately for what uh, they offer. Uh, such a device that is a disaster in, in the making with uh, just about any mistake, I think it should be priced at half the amount it's being used. So I think that around 5 euros would be a decent one for a device that is uh, so dangerous, particularly so when others, and I'm thinking about uh, digital multimeters, um, even uh, in the economy range, have a much better uh, protection. They at least have um, fuse on the low currents uh, measurement range. So this one is uh, highly uh, important. Also, the probes are very poor, and I have mentioned that. Connectors, um, the switch survives reasonably well, so I don't think that is an issue. Uh, the measurement accuracy is clearly below um, other devices, and I think it's one of the poorest. Um, and you have to take that uh, into account. Even for an analog multimeter, this one clearly fails uh, lower than uh, you may expect. And the fact that you require two batteries in order to have the, um, the maximum uh, range. Clearly, in this case, with uh, just a minimal uh, improvement in the um, schematics, there could have been um, a possibility to measure all uh, the resistance range with just a single battery, probably the 9 volt battery. I am entirely sure that there could be other uh, changes made so that uh, is uh, possible. So requiring three batteries, I, from my point of view, is actually overkill. And um, the fact about measuring the um, amplification factor of uh, transistors, yes, I think this is mostly, mostly pointless in this day and age, and I'm not putting any sort of credibility in the amount of... Um, uh, in the accuracy such uh, device would provide. So uh, ultimately I think it's uh, it's a cheap one, but uh, due to competition from other um, analog and uh, even digital multimeters, I think this one is much overrated. It's available on the market and this is good because if you want to, to have an analog multimeter that is uh, reasonably decent, um, your first choice would be probably this, it's quite well uh, supplied in most circumstances. However, for security, for durability, for accuracy, it's uh, the worst option, even when considering the limitations of uh, analog multimeters. So I hope this shows very well what you can expect. Um, and think about the fact that uh, these two devices, one of them analog and one of them digital, are roughly at the same price, and I don't think this one um, is really uh, justified. So, I hope this uh, showed you enough about uh, this device. I think it, um, it offers a basic functionality, nothing more, nothing less. But I hope if you want to try um, 
spending time uh, and uh, money on a multimeter and you are actually very careful in what kind of measurements you're going to make and particularly not uh, using uh, the current uh, measuring range unless you know very well what are the circumstances I think you will be able to uh, enjoy it but other than that I would not recommend such a product uh, there are clearly other options that are slightly more expensive or mm, similarly expensive and they have uh, much better features, construction or just about anything about them that would probably be a good uh, choice. However, the only aspect you may consider to be slightly good is that it has a large um, display. So this means that you may have a better chance of seeing what you want. And if this is your uh, choice, then clearly it's not a bad one. In this price range, I don't think you have um, generally a large uh, display. But other than that, I think it fails on so many circumstances that it's not a recommendation. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.